Hey guys! So I know I kind of broke my promise when I said I was going to be on booktube a little bit more, but I have a lot of unexpected things happen these past like month and a half. However long it's been since I last uploaded a video, but um, I apologize for that. I really do. For some reason my brain thought like my assignments were going to be easier this last half of the semester and it was actually quite the opposite. All my really big projects were due, all like just crazy amounts of work I had to be doing for school that I really didn't have time to read a whole lot or upload or make videos so I apologize. Luckily though this is the last, this is like as I'm filming this right now this is finals week and I have two days of finals. Some classes have finals and some don't and they're pretty like it's, I think that these finals are the easiest I've ever had, so fingers crossed that it will all go well. Enough of my rambling, though. That's not why you guys are here. You guys are here to see my wrap-up, and that's what I'm going to give you right now. So the first two books that I've read and finished these past two months were the next two books in the Poison Princess series that I have started and loved, and the second one is Endless Night, and the third being Dead of Winter by Cressley Cole. Now to kind of give you, like, an individual rating on each, I gave Endless Night a four or four and a half. I think it was a four and a half star rating because um, it was really good. I think that each book in the series actually gets better and better and better. Um, I only gave it a four and a half because there was this part like somewhere like in the middle where it just got really kind of slower for me and I was able to put it down and I had to actually pick it back up when I went to reread this and start it again because I forgot a little bit what happened in the beginning. Um, but after that like I was hooked from then to the end right into the next book didn't let me down. Love the story, love the characters. I can't really say too much about this without giving the books away, I, I guess. Because a lot of the events that happen in these two books would totally spoil a lot for you guys. So I gave this one a four and a half star rating and I gave Dead of Winter a five star rating. Amazing, hands down. Loved it. I do have a full review up of Plays and Princess. I will link down below in case you guys are interested or have maybe heard of the series, whatnot. Um, it's amazing. It takes place with tarot cards who are actually people and they compete in games and then the winner of the games, like basically they have to eliminate everyone and then the winner gets immortality, they don't age, whatever, they have all the memories of the previous games and death in this series has won like the past three and he has immortality so he hasn't aged while the other people just kind of have to reset after like so many years go by and they don't have all these all the memories that he does so very very interesting and I think this in this series death's character that sounds so weird to say, but I've never been, I think, more intrigued about a character. Um, he's got so many different, like, things about him that it's always making me, like, question myself while reading about him. I've had a million different opinions of the guy, but he's quickly turned into one of my favorites in the series, so, yeah. The next book I finished, I think I picked this one up mid-April, and I had to put it down because of all the work I've told you about, and I finished this, like, a week ago. I think, but that was These Broken Stars by Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner. I gave this one a 4 out of 5 stars. I really, really enjoyed it. For me, I know that I might be like the minority when I say this because I know a lot of people, this is like their favorite book, hands down, and I loved it. But for me, it kind of like took a little bit for me to really get it kicked into gear. Um, the whole beginning like really captured my interest. The beginning was amazing. Really grasped my interest in the story. But uh, for this to make more sense, let me explain the synopsis. I'm going all over the place. I apologize. Um, basically, if you haven't already heard, this is basically like a Titanic type theme story that takes place in outer space, if you will. It's about this big ship that was created and the girl, the main character is a girl in here and a guy. I guess it takes place with two perspectives, which is really cool. But the girl in here, she is the daughter of like the commander over like everything. She's like basically equivalent of the president's daughter, I guess, um, and he is the one who actually overseen, like, created this ship and has, like, owns basically this large corporation that builds everything, really. Um, and she happens to be on this ship with some friends for, for I guess, a trip, just a vacation away from where her planet's at, and she runs into this army war hero named Tarver. Her name is Lilac. And she runs into this war hero named Tarver. They have an interesting first meeting, and he's interested. And he quickly learns who she is and who her father is. He already knows who her father is. And he realizes that she is very, like, out of his league, I guess. Because her father is very overprotective. 
and will not basically let her settle down with just any guy. So after their first meeting and they kind of have that like little falling apart because she realizes that she does need to push him away because she doesn't want her father to do anything if he found out. And like shortly right after that happened, I'm not spoiling anything for you guys, just setting this up for you. Um, shortly after that happened, something occurs with the ship and it gets pulled out of hyperspace, which basically means like as it orbits, it just got like sucked out and it's getting like crashed. It's like going to crash on a planet because it's not in its normal rotation. I don't know how to make that make more sense. Basically, it's the equivalent of a plane flying and it loses power and it just burnt kind of crashes, but it's the equivalent of that. So they have what are called escape pods, or if it was like on the Titanic, those little lifeboats that people get into so that they can hurry and break off from the ship and land somewhere safe. Well, basically the same planet, but they won't die with the ship. However, the two main characters end up in the same little escape pod together, and right as they're about to disconnect, the power gets shut off, and they think they're gonna die, and then Lilac like pulls out her mad like mechanic skills and messes with some wires, and it flings them off the ship, and they land on their own. So they're on this planet they know nothing about really and they're trying to make their way back to this escape the, where the big ship crashed so that if someone came to find them they would be where the crash was and they'd be more easily located. So that's basically what this story is about is them like trekking across this unknown territory to get rescue but it also has this other like side to it where they're still obviously into each other and they kind of come to this realization that, you know, if they get rescued, they're going to be thrown back into society and what the expectations are and do they really want that. Basically where it got slow for me was after they first landed on this planet. I don't know, I'm probably the only one that thought this because I know several were captured the whole way through. But there was like this point where they were walking all the way across to get to the ship. And it just got a little bit slower for me during these parts. I can't give you like a definite page number, but I was just kind of like, come on, something happened, something happened. And it was just... I don't know, it was still good, but I just kind of lost a little bit of interest. It didn't hook me as much, I guess, is a better way to put it. But it picked right back up after, like, a few chapters, and I was sucked right back in. And this ending, oh, I was not expecting where the authors were going to take the storyline, and I was not expecting what they did, and how, oh my gosh, my brain is still, like, trying to process this book. But it was amazing. Definitely recommend it if you guys are into sci-fi type books, and if that sounds like something you would like. Highly recommend it, and you should definitely pick this up. The next book I finished was uh, on my Kindle, and it is called Within These Walls by J.L. Berg, I believe. This is a book that I've kind of like read throughout the span of these last month. Um, since I do have the Kindle app, I'm able to pull it up um, basically on my phone. So between classes and such, I just needed something mindless to read to like take a brain break. And this was the book that I've had with me all month. Really good. It's a new adult novel. I'd probably give this one like a three. I'm so torn between three and a half and four star rating with this. Probably a three and a half. Like it was really good, but it did have its little things where I was like, eh. But overall, maybe, yeah, I'd give it a three and a half. Three and a half stars. I really liked the storyline around it. It was very original. Um, basically, it's about this girl who is born with a very, I can't remember the technical name, I'm sorry, but it's a heart defect where she was born with a very large heart and it limits her um, with her physical activity. It could kill her and it's actually slowly killing her and she's had to have many surgeries and treatments to keep her alive. I think she's like 21 or 22 in the book and she gets this news that she needs to have a transplant basically or else she's going to die. Then also you meet this guy who, this is also told from two perspectives and it also talks about this guy named Jude and he works in this hospital because he actually um, lost his fiance in a bad car accident and she died while at this hospital and he lives he lives in New York but they were vacationing in California where this all takes place and he basically stays behind and stays in this hospital because he feels like he can feel like a better connection with his dead fiance there. It's kind of sad. <laughs> but their two paths stumble across each other when he gets moved to the cardiology unit where she's at and they kind of start having these little like late night visits and he brings her pudding. It's just so cute. Um, it is like a love story I guess you can say but they start to fall for each other and she's helping him kind of move on from his tragic past and he's helping her realize that she can um, have all these normal experiences that girls do and she can fall in love and she wants to find any way she can to survive this condition that she was born with. What I also really liked about this was the author actually had done her research. It's, I just saw this in the back of the book and I thought it was really cool. Um, she actually did a lot of research on this condition before writing about it so that she'd get all the facts straight. And she also based a lot of these things that were in the book from an actual person who suffered this condition and pulled a lot of ideas from that. Um, one of the ideas that I really liked, um, in the story, the main character creates, it's kind of like her form of a bucket list. 
but it's called a someday list and all these things she wants to accomplish before she dies and I just thought like this was probably my favorite aspect of the book just because it really opened my eyes to like see how much life is taken for granted that sounds really weird to say but um, when you get thrown into it from a different perspective with someone like this like I was just thinking how much I take for granted and after seeing exactly like all the wants that she wants out of life are just such basic things like just trying to remember what some of the items on the list were like one of them was she wants to wait in line for something she's never waited in line for anything she wants to have a full conversation through text message like it's all these like simple things that we've all basically done but someone like that wouldn't have the opportunity to do because they haven't been given like a normal life and so I thought that was really sweet and it's such a cute romance book because he tries to make all these things on her list happen while they're in this hospital. It's so cute. But overall, I really enjoyed it and I'd say if you like New Adult and that sounds like something you guys would like, I would definitely give this one a shot because it was really cute. Alright, that basically sums up the four books that I read these past two months and I'm just going to include my May wrap up in this video as well because why not? So a lot of these you'll probably see as repeats that I had like videos ago that I still haven't got to but I'm going to finish them you guys. That's like my goal here. So. The first book that I am currently reading, I'm actually almost done with it. Thank goodness, I feel so bad because I haven't had time to actually sit down and read this. But um, it is Nightblade by Garrett Robinson. I've mentioned this one several times. I don't have the actual book with me right now because it's in my backpack. Because I'm taking it to school with me this week, so when I have these long breaks, I can read it. So I do plan on finishing that one this month. I know I've said that forever ago, and I feel so bad, so I apologize. I wanted to get a review up for that, but just have not had the time. Um, I'm also currently reading Throne of Glass. This is just the cover because my actual book is I think downstairs and I just don't want to go get it but yeah I am finishing up reading Throne of Glass I just started this one not that long ago so I'm kind of like still at the beginning really good I loved it I've read the novella before this one and I just oh so good so good that being said I'm really really glad I read um, the novella before starting this because a lot of things make more sense that are mentioned in here and some things are just briefly mentioned but had a bigger impact in that story and I'm just like whoa whoa it's, it's kind of cool so I would recommend if you haven't started this series re definitely read the novella book it's there on my shelf really it's like basically five novellas in one and it's called the assassin's blade it's basically it feels like it's its own book like it is just as big as these ones and all the novellas like flow with each other and they all occur right after the other so it's kind of cool. Okay, the other one, since I picked this one out of my TBR jar and it was A Beautiful Wedding, Beautiful Wedding by Jamie McGuire, I decided before reading this one I actually wanted to finish reading Walking Disaster by Jamie McGuire. I'm really close to being done with this. I think, I don't know if I even mentioned this in my last video, but so, so close. I only have like that much left to go. Um, this is basically a retelling of Beautiful Disaster, but in the middle main character's point of view. Wow, my brain just shut off. And then I will read this. It will take me like no time at all to read. So really looking forward to finally finishing these because I love that story. I also really want to read The Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard. I have wanted to pick this one up for so long now and I just haven't. I think I want time to actually sit down and enjoy this. So once I'm done with finals, I definitely look forward to finishing this. And then I also had this one picked from my ABC challenge list, and that was Hex Hall by Rachel Hawkins. I have not yet started any books by her, but I heard the series is amazing, so I'm definitely going to give it a try. Then in my last TBR video, I also picked up Revenge of the Girl with a Great Personality by Elizabeth Yulberg, and I still need to read and finish this one, so yeah. Now I'll pick a book out of my TBR jar. This is my favorite part of like all my TBR videos because I just, I love not knowing what I'm going to pick and hopefully I can finish all the books that I have. I think I'm like two books behind on my TBR jar, but I'm almost done with, I guess, one of them technically. So I'm getting caught up guys. I'm getting caught up. All right. Let's see what I drew. The beginning of after. Ooh, a contemporary. I'm excited. I will insert a picture of that one right here just because I'm having a hard time finding it on my shelves. I think I have an idea where it is, but it's really buried. So, yeah. It could be in like three different spots. I really don't know. Huh. So that was my TBR for the month of May, as well as my March and April wrap-up. I hope you guys enjoyed. Sorry, this might be a little lengthy, but let me know what you guys have been reading these past two months while I've been gone. What you guys have been enjoying. Like, what's your favorite book you guys have read that would you would recommend to me? I need some good recommendations. Um... 
Have you read any of these books that I mentioned in this video? Also, let me know that in the comments below because I definitely need a good idea of where to start on some of these. But yeah, with that, I will see you guys in my next video.